This is Antonio Tuck from the New York chapter of Dynamic Producer. I have a question for Pharrell and Chad. Hypothetically, say if you were a starting producer that had a project studio and you were about to inherit $10,000, how would you use that $10,000 to advance your career? Thanks. Um, I would say, just like I was telling this young lady, like, um, the first thing, the first thing I would do is definitely take uh, piano lessons just to know what it is that you're playing and, and to become familiar with music itself and not just what it is that you hear. And um, $10,000, I would definitely say a Pro Tools starter kit, right? Yeah, some kind of little portable studio so that you could have a hands-on learning experience. Because we started out on 8-track, like yes. a little cassette tape, which which I am glad that we um, went through, despite of all the technology that's out today. That old little measly cassette tape thing taught us how to, you know, patch our own stuff and work with what we had, like eight tracks. Like nowadays, there's like so much technology that you can easily just get overwhelmed. Mm -hmm. I say start something simple, like a little recorder machine, a little microphone. Um, take piano lessons. Take some kind of instrument lessons. Um, and if it, depending on what you're doing, I'd say like learn how to DJ too, because that helps out just being able to pick records and learning why you like a certain song, why you like listening to something that helps you find a groove. Um, uh, That's it. That's really it. But definitely like some sort of Pro Tools starter kit, like like something to where like it's not too difficult to learn and become like he said becoming overwhelming because. Once you see like 10,000 buttons and all these, you know, infinite possibilities of like arranging things, mm -hmm. it just becomes so much you sort of lose yourself. You should start on something that doesn't really, that can't accommodate you fully so that you strive for more and you, you know, you realize exactly. it's something you want to do, exactly. but damn, you know, this doesn't have that capability. So then you work a little harder and you save up your money and it makes you appreciate it and you, you, from that point on, you're beginning to master all of the equipment that you use. That's what's important. Exactly. You can't you can't master like a full-on studio in one year. You can forget about it. But what you can master is the art of playing piano and reading, uh, and learning on small equipment and knowing when you know, knowing when it's time for you to expand. That's how we did it. I yes. mean, not to say that you know it's the only way, but. Yeah, there's all these equipment that emulate old things. But if you don't even know those old things you're emulating, what's the purpose? That's right. Chad and Pharrell. What up, homie? I'm from the New York chapter. Um, I got my own independent record company. It's called Montana Wave Records. I go by the name of Manny Montana. My question for you is, how do you balance out artistry and being a CEO of a company and being able to have being able to make certain decisions, tough decisions, balancing out both the artistry and the um, CEO aspect of the game. Congratulations, got your own company. That's important. Um, it depends on what kind of deal you got, number one. Um, definitely, if I were you, if you really believe in your project like that, I would definitely be selling out of the trunk. I would get me a great accountant who could keep up with it so I could pay Uncle Sam, keep him out of my pockets. But just so you know how it works, you know, you can fuck around and get the right deal. Um, you find the right distribution company, you know, and it probably costs you maybe a dollar a record. You're able to sell them out of your trunk for ten dollars a CD. So, you know, you do the math. You sell ten thousand CDs. You make about a hundred grand. That's how Master P and all these other guys down south they get rich because, you know, they take they take the business into their own hands. Now, being an artist and being a CEO, that's not really wise unless you're a great numbers guy. Because the numbers you gotta keep up with, but the creative side of it you have to be able to keep up with too. And you can do it for a while, but the beauty of being an artist is keeping up with your own um, evolutionary steps upstairs. If you're evolving, 
then you're in a great place. But sometimes stagnance can come from worrying about other things that have nothing to do with your creativity. I wouldn't suggest it. It's a gamble. Once you lose it, you got to go back and get it. And there are some people like when they ain't done music for a while, they go they go back out there and chase it. And you see them like they ain't the same person you used to be in love with musically. Like yo, that nigga used to have the illest rhymes ever. Like I mean that shit he just spit that shit was alright. Or yo, that kid used to have the illest beats ever. Uh, yeah, I heard something he did on such and such. It was cool. But it wasn't that heat because he probably looked away from the sun a little too long. And that's the thing. You got to stay. Keep your eyes on that creative light. Don't ever push it away. So if you got a business partner that you trust that you could have run your label with you, with you, under your own instruction, he can run things by you, that'd be much better. I don't suggest that you do the same thing. Everybody is, isn't going to be as fortunate as Master P. And even then, um, fortune isn't always money. Sometimes fortune is is being happy where you are and what it is that you're doing. Money ain't everything, man. Right?